Today, you can go to a supermarket in Brazil, buy your groceries, and if you forgot something, you can return the next day and get it for the same price. Seems normal, right? But it wasn't always like this. In the early 1990s, hyperinflation plagued Brazil. For many Brazilians, that meant rushing to the supermarket as soon as their paycheck came in, because prices would likely skyrocket the next day. But in just a few years, Brazilians emerged from that crisis, and their brand new currency, the real, stood strong against the US dollar. 30 years later, the Brazilian real doesn't have the same purchasing power it once did, but the Plano real that introduced the new currency left an enduring legacy for the country, rescuing Brazilians from uncertainty and volatility. So let's dive into this transformation. Since the end of the dictatorship in 1985, hyperinflation was a daily reality in Brazil. Until 1992, several measures to control inflation failed miserably, including Fernando Collor's infamous seizure of savings accounts, one of the most notorious events in Brazil's recent history. But in 1993, things began to change. After the Itamar Franco government made some budget cuts, Fernando Henrique Cardoso took office as the country's finance minister and soon presented the Plano Real to Congress. Shortly after, the Unidade Real de Valor, or Real Value Unit, was implemented to index the country's economy. By July 1994, shortly before Brazil won the World Cup for the fourth time, the real was introduced as the country's official new currency. The measure proved effective and inflation plummeted. The Brazilian real, initially pegged one-to-one -one with the US dollar, brought about radical change. The monthly inflation rate, which was over 40% before the introduction of the Unidade Real de Valor, dropped to less than 10%, bringing stability to the country. Outlandish prices and the need for huge wads of banknotes to purchase anything immediately became a thing of the past. All of a sudden, a Big Mac cost less than two reais fifty, and a Coke was eighty cents. Dried beans were ninety cents a kilo, and chicken was one real thirty. Brazilians could go to the supermarket with a five or ten real bill and bring home a lot of good stuff. Fernando Henrique Cardoso, who played a key role in explaining the plan to the public, became immensely popular and was elected president three months later. The fixed exchange rate with the US dollar lasted until January 1999, and the real has lost a great deal of purchasing power since. However, the Plano Real's legacy proved lasting. But despite its successes, the Plano Real wasn't perfect. Fiscal adjustments were only made a few years later, and by the end of Fernando Henrique's term, Brazil still needed IMF support to avoid a crisis. And before he could win the 2002 election, Fernando Henrique Cardoso's successor, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, had to make an unwavering commitment to the economic policy in place at the time, a promise laid out in his famous letter to the Brazilian people. Under Lula's leadership, Brazil experienced prosperity in the 2000s, benefiting from a commodities boom and a more stable economic environment. The stability helped reduce economic inequality and navigate political crises at home and global crises like the COVID pandemic. Economic ups and downs are inevitable, but if Brazil is a reasonably financially stable country today and not avoided like the plague by foreign investors, much of the credit for that can be attributed to the Plano Real.